Gramshaw show has been Gramshaw with me, Chris Goodram. <laughs> a week. A week. It disappears. It flies by. Here we are again. Uh, yet another tasting. And um, I thought, you know, this week, um, it was probably about time I had a, another look at uh, uh, Carn Moore and, and their single cask releases uh, called The Celebration of the Cask. It's been been a while since I've done an episode on uh, on Carn Moore and... Um, they kindly give me samples each time they um, they do a, a, a bottling run, um, which tends to be around about I think about sort of four times a year. Uh, they, uh, they they do these things, and um, I thought you know I've got, I had a load of samples knocking around. I thought I'd just select a few uh, that were released last year. Some still available, some no longer available. Um, but you know I just thought why not? You know so so we've got an interesting selection uh, of, uh, of whiskies and um, I don't think there's kind of an awful lot to say. Um, you know, I've done a couple of episodes, uh, probably more than a couple of episodes I think on on Carn Moor so don't really have a great deal to say about this company because I've said it already so we'll just we'll just have a look at what I'm tasting today. So we're going to kick off with the, the youngest bottling, uh, which is uh, a 19 year old Glen Lossy. Now, that's quite interesting. Well, interesting. <laughs> you don't see very much privately bottled Glen Lossy around these days. So, yeah, it used to be quite sort of, well, I wouldn't say quite ubiquitous, but uh, there was, there was you would often see it more so than you do these days. I mean, um, it can be a quite a pleasant spay, light, grassy, sometimes a bit innocuous, it has to be said. Um, this particular bottling, like I said, is 19 years old. It was uh, bottled from a single uh, bourbon hogshead, 6749, uh, uh, distilled in November of 97 and bottled in April of this year uh, at 54.2%, so could be interesting. Second bottling we'll be looking at is another space side. Uh, this is a 20-year-old uh, Tam Du. Again, Tam Du is one of those ones that don't see so often these days. I mean, I'm guessing it's probably uh, like a lot of these distilleries are no longer um, selling casks in the quantity possibly that they, they used to do. So this is why you don't see so many casks uh, knocking about on the, um, the independent uh, market. So uh, again, there's another Hogshead, uh, Bourbon Hogshead 307089, distilled in May of 1997, bottled in October of 2017 at 54.6% so yeah, we'll see what that one's like and the third bottling we'll be looking at is called uh, Westport now um, there's probably a number of you know full well what uh, what Westport is but for those of you that don't Westport is teaspooned Glen Morangi um, tends to be teaspooned with Glen Moray I don't know why that is but um, so technically not a single malt it is technically a vatted malt I mean even though like I said it's been teaspooned so therefore it can't be called uh, Glen Morangi um, so this was distilled in March of 1995 bottled in April of last year uh, a, sing, uh, I'd say a bourbon hogshead 360091 bottled at 52.6 and Often, uh, it's just, you know, pff, remarkable value for money. I mean, 22-year-old Glen Morangi, if it was bottled by the distillery, would probably be a fair few pence, shall we say. So, uh, And the third, or the fourth bottling we'll be looking at is a Blair Athol. Now, um, Blair Athol is a kind of classic Highland uh, malt. Tends to be, more often than not, sherry matured, certainly the... Uh, official bottling, uh, the 12 year old in the flora and fauna range is pretty heavily sherried and you know most of the distill, uh, the private bottlings that one comes across tend to be um, sherry matured but you do get some American oak matured ones and this is a, a cask, don't know whether it was a hogshead or a barrel, um, so cask number 7297 distilled in August of uh, 91 and bottled in August of 2017 so always nice to see um, a distillery that normally is matured in sherry in American oak, you know, I mean, they're, they're classic example like McAllen and Dalmore, for example. Um, so, yeah, always nice to see another side of those particular distilleries. This <coughs> penultimate bottling is a very, very special bottling uh, and um, was released um, 
in uh, December, uh, just before Christmas. Uh, it was uh, for the retirement of the uh, of Brian Brian Morrison from um, the Morrison and Mackay, uh, and uh, this was fittingly a 26-year-old Bumore. Um, distilled in May of 1991 and bottled in November of 2017. Uh, I think it was two casks, I think. Uh, it's not a single cask bottling, but uh, um, certainly comes in a nice kind of uh, gold uh, outer wooden packaging kind of thing and looks slightly, you know, slightly different uh, labelling as you can see from the, uh, the introduction picture. And... Um, well, without giving too much away, it's not going to be crap, is it? You know, this is this is Brian Morrison we're talking about here. He is not going to bottle a crap whiskey for his retirement, is he? So, um, needless to say, I'm going to be looking forward to trying that, trying that one. Well, I've already tasted it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and finally, we'll be looking at um, a grain. And look at the colour on that, will you? I don't know whether you can quite see that. I mean, first fill bourbon, one would imagine. Um, it's a, a barrel. Uh, bourbon barrel uh, 67863 this is a, a, a Gervin by the way um, 27 year old Gervin distilled in December of 89 and bottled in October of 2017 at 51.4% and Gervin does tend to be one of the more lighter of or I, I tend to find one of the more lighter of the uh, the grain whiskies and does pick up the oak pretty well but I mean phew, that's got some serious colour, so I'm expecting some serious oak on that one. So anyway, but we shall get to that one uh, at the end. Um, so before we do that, obviously we've got, to, we've got a few more to get through first. So anyway, let's kick off with the, uh, the Glen Noss here. <laughs> right, OK, so let's, uh, let's see what uh, the Glen Noss then gives us. Quite robust, actually, um, by Glen, Glen Lossy standards. Um, plenty of barley. There's a there's a slight sort of strawy kind of maturity uh, in the background. Some oak, a little bit of tangerine, lime, sweet uh, vanilla oak. Um, barley's coming out really, really nicely now, giving it a little bit of aeration. And um, you know what? That's that's a lovely, a lovely whiskey. Um, I think I, I think I, we stocked this. Um, I think actually, in fact, I stocked all of them, I believe. Um, and um, yeah, there's a, a, a little bit of coffee kind of coming through. It's it's lovely. It's lovely balanced. I'm getting the, the, the distillery character. I'm getting sort of the, you know the, the barley, the space side character. I'm getting the oak, um, and it's yeah, lovely. Just a really, really nice whiskey. See what Pal gives. Oh, it's a juicy finish. Opens up with a little bit more oak, so a little bit more vanilla. Um, a little bit more tannins as well. It's kind of a little bit dry right at the start, in actual fact, which is quite quite unusual. I mean, the tannins obviously are adding sort of a really nice structure to uh, to the whiskey, um, and a little bit of spice, and a touch of white chocolate on the beginning. And barley kind of comes through quite pleasantly on the middle. Finish is wonderfully juicy, but all the while the kind of tannins are just kind of sit there, and they're kind of sort of pushing, if you can imagine, kind of pushing the flavours kind of inwards. I know this probably sounds a bit daft, but this is pretty much what it feels like it's doing. The tannins are just sort of kind of sitting right on the edge of the tongue and are kind of almost compressing the uh, the, the, the flavours. And so uh, you get this lovely, like I said, this wonderful juicy apricot tangerine uh, finish with the sort of the barley lingering. And that's a bloody good cask, it has to be said. I mean, that is really spot on, just... Uh, Bloody good at the end of the day. Okay, so let's move on to the Tamdu. Um, I mean, the 
one of the things I will say about the, the, the celebration of the Castle Ranch, I love the packaging. And I, I mean, you know, packaging at the end of the day is packaging, isn't it? You know, it often gets just chucked away at the end of the day. It's obviously what's in the uh, in the bottle of cans. But they look really good. Lovely sort of wooden packaging. Um, the labels are a little bit on the small side. So, and, and because they're sort of, you know, printed... Um, that way round and but put a fix to the bottle that way you're and the twist your head to actually sort of read them and I often end up having to sort of like write on the price tag what the actual whiskey is so it's just easier but um yeah I, li I like the packaging I think the packaging's great but anyway that's so let's see what the town dig is a little bit closed actually um quite a bit of oak um sort of slightly nutty oak um a little bit of coconut, maybe some peanut. There's some lovely barley notes. It's it's a little bit subdued, it has to be said, which um, I don't remember it being like this, but maybe it just needs a bit a bit more aeration. Um, there's a touch of pepper, some spices. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a nice note. It's growing. It's one of it's one of those sort of whiskies. I think that just you need to take the time with, and you need to kind of like sort of give it, um, you know, give it some plenty of time to um, to open up. And um, I mean, you know, it's only been in the glass well a minute or so. Well, probably a little bit more than a minute or so, I, I guess. Um, and um, it's just taking a little bit more time. The oak is is a little bit more kind of up front on on this, but. Yeah, I don't think the balance is skewed too far uh, towards the oak, but and it's got some lovely spiciness, which uh, which is nice. So anyway, let's uh, see what the palate is. Oh my God, that's good. Other way round with the palate, in actual fact. Oak is a lot more subdued, more under control. It's got that more kind of mature, sawdusty character. And the palate is gorgeously honeyed. I mean, it is just absolutely dripping in honey. It is wonderfully soft. Um, loads of apricot, lovely mineral, crisp, space ivy finish. Long, juicy. Oh, that is bloody good. That, that kind of... Palette, you know, the nose might be a bit in a funny place at the moment, um, but God, that palette is in a bloody good place. That's all I can see. I mean, like I said, you know, a lot less oak, um, or should we say, the oak is a lot more better behaved, should we say, and just allows all that kind of honeyed sort of apricot fruit, um, apple, and uh, barley to kind of come through. It's just sort of like, mmm, 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 damn, bloody good. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the Westport. It's quite interesting. Um, I had a, a customer come in the shop the other day and said, you know, what do you think about the sort of the bog standard kind of stuff? You know, Glen Ranchy, Glen and stuff like that. I said, you know, I don't like, dislike them. They have a bit of a negative press, I suppose, because they're very ubiquitous and you can find them all over the place. But, you know, the, 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 the whiskies that both Glen Ranchy and Glen Fiddick make are... Yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with them at all. Um, but anyway, let's uh, let's talk about uh, talk about this particular one, shall we? The the, the uh, uh, 22 year old Westport. Aromatic, um, fresh, barley, honey, apricot, a little bit of citrus, touch of pear. I mean, it's just just a. a beautiful whiskey I mean aromatic and you know it just kind of goes it's the sort of whiskey you just want to sort of go mm, and just sniff and you know there's a little bit of oak as well touch of a mm, little bit of chocolate just a smidge maybe um, but god it's just 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 a gorgeous whiskey really really nice um, yeah just a lovely nose so let's see what the palette is
Mmm. Lovely kind of grippy finish. Lots of grippy barley. Um, apricot, lime. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Finish is absolutely fantastic. A little bit more oak on the palate. Um, certainly I'm getting a kind of white chocolate and uh, and, and sort of vanilla cream. Um, but you know the the, the 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 character of the whiskey really stands up to it well certainly comes through on, on the mid palate and, oh that's got a got a real sort of like um piquant spiciness right on the aftertaste and you certainly feel it right in the right in the cheeks um that is just a bloody good whiskey and you know um so like i said i mean uh, if you ever do see the term you know see a whiskey labeled as westport then obviously it's going to be bloody good <laughs> You know, and it's probably and it's going to be sort of like pretty well priced, I think. So uh, forget about the fact that it's got a teaspoon of uh, uh, of uh, Glen Mori in it. It's just oh, bloody good whiskey. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to the Blair Athol. This was uh, obviously bottled in in August of uh, two thousand and seventeen. Let's uh, see how nice it goes. Now I remember um, Graham from uh, from from Morrison McKay kindly came along and did a, a whiskey evening for us um, back, back back this this sort of time in actual fact and kindly brought the uh, um, this bottling the, the the Blair Raffle and it went down a storm and it is just stunning wonderfully mature real lovely dusty sawdusty oak um, apricots and barley and a little bit of honey and it's got an edge to it. It's got a highlandy kind of granity kind of note coming through, um, and a little bit of honey and it's wonderfully mature. And all of this would have just been completely swamped by sherry. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, Blair Athol is a lovely whiskey, and uh, you know, um, getting hold of it and find without the sherry, you know, it's it's just just a lovely whiskey. I mean, you know, some. Some um, distilleries that tend to use um, a lot of sherry, their their spirit doesn't seem to be quite so comfortable, should we say, in uh, in American oak, um, and certainly Dalmore is, is is one of those particular ones um, that can often be a little bit um, hard, should we say? Um, but but Blair Athol, it's just an absolutely gorgeous whiskey, really really nice. Um, and that was stunning bottling. Still available. Um, I think I have. Uh, I, think I might have one on the on on the shelf. If I don't, it's still certainly uh, certainly available from uh, uh, from Morrison and Mackay. So oh, stunning, absolutely stunning. Let's see what the palate gives us. Lovely kind of pulped white fruit finish with a bit of spice. Lovely kind of blend of both creamy and sawdusty uh, vanilla oak. Um, some lovely fruit, some spice. Um, wow, well, that finish is just going, wow, going bloody mad on the tongue. I'm just getting spice and pulp fruit and, mmm, God, that's bloody good. I mean, you know, um, yeah, uh, Morrison Mackay are just exactly the same as any other independent bottler. Um, they they bought some obviously very very good whiskey. They bought some less good whiskey, and uh, so I'm not trying to pretend that should we say everything they bottle is gold, should we say? But um, at the end of the day, I much prefer to um, to review the bloody good stuff rather than the the not quite so good stuff. But anyway. Fortunately, in the um, celebration of the cask range, the 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 hits, shall we say, very much uh, outweigh the misses. But um, this particular bottling is just stunning. I just love that bottling. I mean, mm. oh. right. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the chairman's legacy, Brian Morrison's Bumore. Um 
Let's see what the nose gives us. Classic Bumore, in my opinion. Um, violety, fishy, oily. Um, some lovely soft kind of um, sweet-ish kind of peat. Um, it's got a bit of coal dust. Um, some lovely maturity. It's got, it's got that lovely kind of violety kind of old um, mature character. Um, oh, stunning. Absolutely stunning. I mean, spot on. Yeah, this is when you think of old Bamore or mature Bamore, this this just is it. It is mature Bamore. Um, absolutely classic. Um, and uh, you, you wouldn't expect anything less, would you, at the end of the day. Um, there's a slight herbal note kind of coming through. A little bit of, little bit of coffee, possibly. Um, I mean, that is, this is just so really, really complex. Um, and I, I mean, you know, some of the islas like Bamore, Kalila, um, they just mature so magnificently. Um, and, um, I mean, it still has that sort of, you know, slight kind of macho-y kind of character, and that's what I always used to love about Bamore, um, that it had this kind of wild sort of hairs on your chest kind of character. Um, Certainly the distillery bottlings did before they kind of became a little bit tamer, but uh, um, oh, it, just, it just matures so well. Absolutely stunning. Let's see where the palette goes. Gentle, delicate, oily, white fruit, salt, fish, gorgeously dusty, violety peat, which really kind of comes through on the finish and kind of sort of sticks to the mouth, it has to be said. A little bit of coffee, um, but that, that, that violety um, peat just kind of lingers and lingers and lingers, and it's just, again, just classic old Bamore, it has to be said. Um, absolutely stunning and yeah it's not cheap it's what 300 and something odd pounds a bottle um, which is a bit hefty I suppose you could say for um, a 26 year old Bamore but it's basically what it represents at the end of the day you know and um, oh, absolutely stunning the uh, Gerben. Yes, as you can see, emergency glass is out because uh, well, one bit the dust as they have a tendency to do every now and again. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's see what those gives us. Well, looking at that colour, you think, hmm, that's going to be an oak overload, and it is indeed. It is just huge coconut. Um, I mean, it's just like, oh my God, this is a sort of, you know, Coconut and spice and rye-like herbs. I mean, it's it's just, you can smell the bourbon. Um, you know, it is just kind of like um, it's just just like a bourbon whiskey. It has to be said. Um, and um, it's a lovely nose. It has to be said. But you know, I mean, it's all about the oak. Um, there's 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 no kind of subtlety there at all there's no nuance it's kind of you know i'm a raving oak monster and um <laughs> but then again if you if you love american oak if you love bourbons if you and i do you know and um okay i mean yeah it's nice it's 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 kind of an in your face it's a big kind of bourbony kind of nose um and yeah there's no distillery character what you expect is bloody Gervin for God's sake, you know, it's uh, there isn't exactly an awful lot of distillery character in Gervin, it has to be said. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you can argue that, I mean, I've tasted sort of, I suppose, I've, I've tasted better balanced grain, old grain whiskies, and I like to sort of, yes, I like the oak, and the oak often tends to be a big focal point of the grains 
Um, but you, you know, you you want some sort of dried fruits, some that kind of character, some oxidation character, and um, frankly, there ain't a lot of it there. I can tell you that for a start. Um, it's just yeah, it's just oak, oak, and oak. You know, Let's see what the palace are like. Quite dry, chocolatey finish in actual fact, but would you be surprised when I say it tastes of oak? Well, no, God no. Um, really bourbony, quite bitter chocolate on the finish. Um, there's, there's a little bit of dried fruit, it has to be said. It is kind of saying, um, yeah, that, that there is some grain kind of character there, it has to be said. But I tell you what, if you were tasting that blind, um, You'd be in Kentucky. I mean, you know, it is just all about the oak. It's bourbony, it's vanilla y, um, and some coconut, um, but, you know, a little bit of almost kind of rye like notes. But it, it's, it just goes to show you how, how sort of influential um, oak can be on whiskey. And I know that they, they tend to say that. 60 to 70 percent of the character of, of a whiskey is oak derived and in this in this case it's practically 100 percent it's certainly about 95 percent uh character is oak derived but certainly tasting from some of the other ones certainly uh the glen lossy the the, the tam do the westport um but well, all of them in actual fact certainly you wouldn't say that the, that the balance was skewed towards the, the the oak maybe with the tam do certainly on the nose possibly um, but I would say that certainly on, on, on most of these bottlings, the oak was actually less than less than fifty percent of the uh, of, of, of the flavour uh, uh, component of the actual whiskey. So to say that you know use a blanket figure of sixty percent is is not strictly true. It's uh, you know it's obviously more fluid than that. But anyway, kind of coming back to the Gerben, um yeah, I, I, I stocked it. I, I got one bottle at the end of the day and um, you know, it's it, it it's it, it's an interesting it's an interesting whiskey. It's a fun whiskey, shall we say, and I, I really enjoyed it. So let's sum today's episode of the show up. Um I, just like to say again a, a real big big thank you to Morrison and Mackay for uh, continually uh, popping in and or certainly for Graham popping in and uh, and leaving me samples and all that kind of stuff and um, it, I know that they're, 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 they're doing really well as an independent bottle I mean I know they've been around for, for a number of years um, but obviously I've only been dealing with them for the last handful of years and uh, it's nice to see that uh, you know that they're, they're doing really well because as you can see they're bottling some very very good whiskey and um, looking at them individually I, I like the Glen Lossy I thought it was um, you yeah, know for a generally kind of quite light space it certainly had lots of character lots of depth really really nicely balanced I thought Tam do again it was very very good a little bit more oak um, but certainly robust and uh, and peppery and you know just again a, a, an all-round really nice whiskey um, the Westport um, they seem to have quite a few casts I don't know whether they've still got a few casts of, of, of Westport knocking around I imagine they probably have they probably bought a batch of them I would imagine um, and like I said you know you if you know you know what Westport is, you look at the price of it and you think, 20 odd year old Van Rangy for, the, for that? I'll have some of that, thank you very much. Um, the, the Blair Athol, like I said, in the tasting of it, always nice to see um, a, a distillery that, that tends to do sherry uh, in a completely different light and you certainly get an insight into the character of the spirit and Blair Athol has some lovely character, it has to be said at the end of the day. Uh, Brian Morrison's uh, Bamore, well, Brian, you picked a couple of damn good casks there, that's all I can say, and, uh, well, I don't think that was ever in any doubt, was it really, um, just classic old Bamore, uh, and, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's, 
oh, but more is bloody expensive. I mean, it, I can't imagine that, that, that buying the casks, and, uh, you know, the casks themselves are not cheap, and I know how much they bloody cost because I've tried to buy one, it has to be said. So, um, but anyway, yeah, that's <laughs> beside the point. Um, just stunning, absolutely stunning. And the Girvan, great fun whiskey. It's one of those sort of whiskies that's just sort of a real talking point whiskey, isn't it? You know, it's, it, it's kind of like, yeah, yes, lots and lots of oak. It's like a low American oak um, and, and sort of you know, I have no subtlety, but, you know, it's it's fun nevertheless at, at the end of the day. So so there you have it. There's uh, this is this week's episode of the show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and, and I hope you'll sort of, if you've not, uh, bought any of the uh, the bottlings from Morrison, Mackay or Carnmore, um, you'll have a look at them. I mean, certainly the 46% the, uh, range, the strictly limited range they do, has some absolutely fantastic whiskies in as well. But obviously the celebration of the cask are the ones that we're talking about today. So anyway, um, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag, so to speak. Um, next week, I will tell you what we're going to be tasting next week because I've already figured it out. We're going to be doing um, the other half a dozen uh, Christmas releases from McKillop's Choice. So yeah, that's going to be a bloody good one as well. So anyway, um, until then, all that's left to say is good afternoon then. Mine's an old bore, thank you very much. <laughs>